Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's play some Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup in this beginner ranger guide with our Barachi Hunter. And we are done with the first level of the dungeon. We're experienced level 3. We're still training just bows. And we're ready to go on down to the next level. No scrolls. But we do have two potions of invisibility, two unidentified potions, and a potion of stabbing. Okay, so I come down the steps and I see this. There is an ooze which is aware of my presence, and three enemies which are unaware. I'm going to go up the stairs. And I need to look for another staircase, because if I were to start fighting at that previous location, I would wake all of those enemies up and they would converge on me. And right now, given the fact that I only have a three armor class, I don't want to fight all of them in that spot. I could stair dance them if I have no better alternative, but this looks a lot better to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target this goblin. Notice that this goblin and this kobold, first of all, the kobold doesn't even know I'm here. And the goblin and the kobold are both gray, meaning that they're easy enemies for me. So I'm just going to shoot this guy and we've killed the goblin and we're just going to try and take down the kobold and we have done so. We've got a club and a goblin corpse here. Um, I'm just butchering the corpses as I go because I've adjusted my RC file playing online to auto butcher. If you don't have that enabled um, and you'd like to, I might make a guide to doing that at some point, but you can uh, easily look for that on Google to give you tips on how to edit your RC or you can just walk over the corpse, push C to butcher it, um, and get the meat from it, and eat it when you're hungry. Alright, I'm going to take a shot at this guy. And the reason I'm firing at him, instead of this worm that's down here, given that the worm was aware of me and that guy was asleep, is that the worm's movement, my firing of the bow, and the general presence of me is going to wake up that guy and he's going to add on to the fight and he had a sling there you can see with 21 stones until he was just going to start firing on me the worm is slow and it's going to take forever to get to me so i need to take out the immediate threat first then i can start firing on this guy and i will another goblin is coming and i'm actually going to fire on him instead and now I'm going to keep going at the worm. And you can see the worm is very, very tough. He's a white um, enemy in terms of his threat scale that the game perceives. But he does have a lot of health. And luckily, we were able to shoot him down before he got to us. We're down to 23 arrows. And so we're going to want to pick all of these arrows up. Here comes a rat. He's hard to hit, but we got him. Or we didn't. And now we did. All right, so I'm just having auto pick up, get all of this stuff for us. Let's kill this cockroach. Another thing is you want to fire at enemies if they're sleeping because when an enemy is asleep, it does not get its evasion bonus. So it's nearly a free shot. Its armor might block it, but if it has a shield, it does not get to use its shield while it's sleeping and it doesn't get to evade. So it's a great time to just take a shot at an enemy. I'm going to get this um, book of spells here and see what we get. Um, so it's a book of maledictions, which are um, some hexes, basically, and some charms, I believe. Let me look at these. Yeah, these, this is a book of hexes. Never mind. No charms. Um, so Corona, Ensorcelled Hibernation. These are great spells if you're trying to play um, an enchanter like if you're going for uh, a stealthy stab you kind of build and this is fine I'm probably not going to get any of these spells but there is some merit in considering them 
Ensorcelled hibernation is very powerful, um, but at the same time, we don't get stabbing bonuses with our bow. We could try to pick up a dagger or a short blade and, and work on some stabbing, but you have to remember that as a Barachi, um, we're not really that sneaky um, because we have the plus line of sight. So going that path isn't what we're trying to do, uh, but it's something you could explore if you got an exceptionally good weapon and you wanted to try to make more of a hybrid type character, but that's not what we're doing here. In this build, we are going for a strict ranger or a ranged shooter. We just hit experience level four and we got an intelligence boost there, which is terrific. I say strict ranger, and that is what we're going to be doing. Casting, I'm sorry, shooting people with our bow. However, we do want some spells to complement our ability to shoot people from far away. And we're going to get them. Most notably, Blink. All right, and we're just taking down enemies. I'm just auto exploring and blasting enemies as we go. You can see that many of the enemies that we just took down were some that we perhaps saw from the other entrance that we see to the north of us that we already came down. And those enemies have dispersed. Whoa, look at that. That's kind of a mess. So I'm actually going to walk away from that without firing. And the only enemy so far that seems to have been aware of us was that goblin. We're going to take him down, but I don't want to fight all of those guys at the same time. We would probably win, but there's no sense in risking... All right, I'm going to fire at the goblin and not the bat, because the goblin is more dangerous. I'm going to fire at the cockroach and not the bat, because again, the bat is not really that scary. All right, let's pick up these arrows. Okay, now, this is another reason. Robin was over there, all right? Let's see if we can get away from Robin. Okay. Robin is um, a unique guy that does something pretty amusing, which is he buffs goblins and he throws them at you. And so he's usually not that tough, but... It's much easier if you can take him by himself. Because even though goblins aren't hard, if he's buffing them up, you run into a situation where they can become hard, and then he's throwing them at you, and then you aren't able to escape very easily. So I'm just going to try to... Goblin has... Um, I'm sorry, Robin has wandered up to the northwest there, and he's left us alone with this hobgoblin and this goblin so i'm just going to kind of leave this here um and take down his dudes before he gets a chance to buff too many of them now you can see he has done that he has buffed up this these two goblins um and so i'm going to go ahead and just get away from this i'm going to jump as far as i can okay and we're going to go away I'm going to go around this corner. Remember, we move slowly. And so what Robin has just done is thrown this goblin in front of us. Now, we can kill him because goblins still aren't that hard. He's thrown another goblin at us, and we're just going to take him down. And I'm going to be running this entire time to try and get a situation where it's just me and Robin. Remember, I'm slow, so Robin is going to close the distance, and he's thrown another guy on us. I'm going to go up. I'm going to take this guy up the steps, and we'll fight him right here. Oh, I have no arrows. Hmm, another thing to be mindful of. Okay, so I'm going to switch to my short sword, and I'm going to see if we can take him down, and we can. Goblins are still easy, and let's rest. Okay, so we need to get arrows. We have a bunch of arrows all over the floor. But again, um, I wasn't necessarily being as mindful as I needed to be there. This staircase is still no good, still a dart slug. So let's see if we can find another staircase. Here we go. 
Um, this is a stack of 19 arrows. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to go up the steps. This worm is going to come with us and he can hit us hard. Um, but it's well worth it just to get these arrows. So now I'm going to jump away from this worm way up here. And even though um, we are slow, you can see our movement speed 1.2 instead of 1, which is the normal movement speed. And I'm looking up in the upper right to, to indicate this number in parentheses here is the speed in terms of turns that your last action took and our last action was moving it took 1.2 now we can still move away from this worm and he's not going to be hard i'm going to switch to my bow and i do want to just call attention to the fact that changing weapons does take time you can see it took 0.5 of a turn half of a turn it's still usually worth it to do that but it's worth noting that it does take time to do that now I'm going to fire, and we're just going to see if we can get some good hits on this guy before he gets to us, and we did. We killed him, in fact. And I'm going to pick up the arrows. Now, we got really lucky that there was just a stack of 19 arrows there, but that's another reason why um, switching to a bow is quite favorable because arrows are plentiful. If I do a search, for example... You can see that we actually haven't found any bolts in the game yet, which are crossbow weapons. Now, we've only seen two floors of the dungeon, so it's not that many. But crossbows, while they're really, really cool, and in my other run, if you if you end up watching that with the Barachi, I go crossbow so I can use a shield because I felt like I would need it. But after playing with a ranged character more, um, I was able to understand that you don't really need a shield. And in fact, the best ranged weapons don't allow you to use a shield, like a longbow um, or a triple crossbow or something like that. So anyway, because of this, we do have um, 18 arrows on us and then 26 arrows of our own from before on this level, giving us plenty of stuff to shoot with. I'm going to fire at this dark slug while he's sleeping and just put him down. There we go. And we'll just take down this lizard. We did get a scroll of identify. Oops. I'm going to read this scroll so I can try to find a potion of healing somewhere. I'll look at this bubbling yellow potion. And it's a potion of haste. Not healing, but a very, very good potion anyway. Now we're up to 32 arrows. And I hope you're learning from my mistake how important it is. Twice now, I have forgotten to keep track of my arrows. And it's not a huge deal this early in the game because most of the enemies are we can kill with our short sword and we can escape from. But it's a best practice to be mindful of your arrows. Now, later in the game, it's going to go away your need to do that because you're going to end up with I think in, at one point my high po number of crossbow bolts in my last game was like 1800 or something like that and so there's plenty of ammunition in the game but early it's a little bit harder to come by now here comes Robin um, I'm going to just take down his guys and I'm going to jump this way and we did a really bad jump unfortunately Oh, and he um, threw the guy right there. That's a bummer. But we are in this spot where we can take, we can fight Robin by himself. And he is hitting us, but he's using a plus zero whip. Now, if he had a magical whip with a brand on it, we couldn't do this, probably. We would need to run away and hop away from him. use our potion of invisibility something else but because he's just got this regular whip he's wearing a plus zero animal skin and he has on a helmet um we can just fight him and yeah we will kill him once his goblins are gone and it's just him and he has nothing exceptional in terms of gear he's not that scary we have plenty of arrows and we're fine now he did have a helmet and i'm going to pick that up because Oops. Um, I can wear it. And we get an armor class bonus. Ooh, it's red. 
It's like a red helmet on our on our head. We're up to 37 arrows, and we're flying along just fine, and we just got level 5. Great. You can see that buckler there. We're not going to pick that up because um, our crossbow is a two... I'm sorry, our short bow is a two-handed weapon. That's why it's saying right here, shield currently unavailable. When you're using a two-handed weapon, you can't have a shield, and it'll tell you it's unavailable. However, we can have all this other stuff. We just haven't found it. Except for our new helmet. And that is the end of Dungeon 2. So let's find a staircase and check what we've got on Dungeon 3. Well, look, it's a rat. Let's just blast him. I'm, I feel fine about how many arrows I have. And so I'm not worried about the fact that I'm firing arrows at you know really really easy enemies if I weren't finding a lot and I needed to conserve them then against these gray enemies that I felt were no threat I would just be using my short sword but we have now 46 arrows we found a stack of some more so it's not a problem by the way um, I walked backward against that jackal to get him out of the water because sometimes if you fire an arrow and it misses and it lands in the deep water, which is this um, darker blue stuff right here. It says deep water, shallow water. If it lands in the deep water, it's gone. So I just don't want to lose arrows unnecessarily. So I walked him back to the corridor. Let's see. We do have a scroll of identify. So let's identify these two potions and their potions of curing. This is great because now we can heal ourselves from poison or confusion, which are the primary uses of potions of curing. They do give you some hit points back, but it's so small that I never use curing potions for healing unless I'm in an emergency situation and I need to just get a few extra hit points and there's no enemy that can hit me nearby. Um, because generally most enemies that can hit you can do more damage than the potion of curing can heal, so it's a moot point to just drink it to heal yourself unless you're trying to teleport or something weird um but even then i save potions of curing for getting rid of poison and um being confused so there's some ring mail remember i always like to just search for armor to see what I found, and this is actually the best armor that we've found so far. And I pick it up. Now, I'm just going to fire an arrow just for fun to this square. And you can see it takes me 1.0 turns to fire that. And I'm going to wear my ring mail. It takes us up to 6 armor class. It does inhibit our evade somewhat. And then I'm going to fire my arrow right here. Just by pushing the period key to fire it short. And it still takes 1.0 turns. So we're not encumbered by this armor. It's not slowing us down. And you really want to wear the heaviest armor that you can with this build. Unless you have some spells that you're trying to cast. But we don't yet. So you want to wear heavy armor. So that if you do have to melee something, you can absorb some hits even better. I'm up to 64 arrows and feeling quite good. Here's a bunch of jackals. Now we want to just go back. Oh, I think here is fine. And we're just going to shoot at them. And we're fighting them in this hallway so they can only fight us one at a time. And we can fight this guy right here just because he's the last one. There's a scroll. It's a bat. Unidentified scroll again. A bunch of money. Here is an orc who has himself a little dagger. Yeah, let's just blast him. And um, I'm going to actually start firing on this dart slug because he's more dangerous to me than the bat. And it's a quaka. Let's get him. Boom. We've got ourselves a leopard gecko. Not a problem. Okay. Let's just blast this guy away. Now there's an adder coming, so I want to fight in this hallway to make sure we're fighting just one enemy at a time. 
And, you know, snakes are very hard to hit, so that's why it took us so many shots. But luckily, he didn't he didn't even get us. And he didn't poison us. Oh, this guy has a short sword of venom, which we're going to immediately take from him after we kill him. We're going to just walk over him. I'm going to butcher his corpse, and I'm going to pick up his short sword of venom. And we are actually going to um, drop our regular short sword. Boom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So let me remember how to do this. Um, one second. I'm just going to fire on this ball python, and we just killed him in one shot. Okay. So um, I'm going to set something up for myself just to be a convenient shortcut if we ever need it. And you guys can feel free to do this in your own uh, builds. If you feel like you're going to be switching between your melee weapon and your bow, and you want an easy way to do that, I mean... The long way is just to push W for wield and then select your short sword or your bow from this screen and that's you can do it that way. Or you can go into your inventory with you know by pushing I. But a, a shortcut um, built into the game is the apostrophe key, which is the button next to the enter key, will just switch you between what you have in your A weapon slot and what you have in your letter B weapon slot. And right now we have our short bow, but you can see that in our inventory, the, the short sword of venom that we picked up is actually set to letter T if we're looking right here. So the apostrophe key is not switching it to that. But if you ever want to remap what's at letter A and what's at letter B, so you can use this switching, um, this quick switch apostrophe shortcut, you can push the equals key and then it says adjust items, spells, or ability. And we want to adjust items by pushing I. And then we want to adjust the short sword. So we push T and then it says adjust to which letter. And we want to push it to B. And now it is B. And so if I push the apostrophe, I'm switching between the short sword of venom or the bow, short sword, bow. And so now I have a quick way to do that. And you can remap whatever is at A and B whenever you like by using the equals key like that. All right. Now, for example, right here, I'll switch over to my short sword of venom um, and hit that bat. Okay, so here's four orcs. One of them is an orc priest, which is the guy in the green robes that the game is gauging at a yellow threat level. And he has himself a um, morning star, I believe. Oh, it's a flail. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, right, right. It's a flail. Now, what's dangerous about an orc priest is that they smite you. Smiting is one of the most annoying abilities in the game and it will be the end of many characters who don't respect it or plan to avoid it what it does is he's calling down power from his god to smite you and he does not need line of fire to do it if he can see you he can do it to you and it automatically hits you okay so um it's a really really annoying ability and I think it can hit for 14 damage at maximum I, I could be wrong on that exact calculation it might be like 12 or 13 but I think it's 14 and so you need to take him down as fast as possible so I'm going to fire at him and I'm going to fire at him again and I'm going to fire at him another time and another time and now he's on us so I'm actually going to jump away down as far as we can get down to here and you can see he did smite us okay it says the orc priest calls down the wrath of biog upon you in purple meaning that he smited us and it says pain shoots through your body and he just did nine damage to us from this far away just by blinking all right and so 
we need to kill him and I'm firing and I'm firing and I'm now I'm just firing even though he's on me I cannot hop anymore um okay and now things are getting scary so why are they getting scary because there's two targets that can now hit me I really thought we were going to kill this guy faster but if you look at him he, had, he doesn't even have that good of a vade. he's just been crushing us um, and that's, that's a problem. Oh, you know what? I actually don't think that he did smite us before. I think that he used pain on us, which is another thing he can do, which is annoying. Um, anyway, I'm going to walk away and he hit us, um, this time with a smite and it says he smites us and you can see he just wrecked us again. And now we're at 12 hit points. Okay. So this is getting really scary. So I'm actually going to... Um, I'm going to quaff invisibility, okay? And you can see that all of these guys have question marks on them because they don't know where we are anymore. And I'm going to step away. Now, even though they don't know where we I am, it doesn't mean that they can't take a blind swing at my location. And in fact, he did hit, try to hit me. He barely missed me, all right? So I'm going to look at this guy again. He can hit me for six damage plus his flail. And that means that he could one shot us with his flail if he hit us and we rolled a zero on our armor class. Although let me let me think about that for a second. Um my ring mail. It actually has a base armor rating of five. Never mind. So he couldn't one shot us right now, but it's really scary. So what I'm going to do, I have no evocables. Is I'm going to actually push Q. And I'm going to take it easy and be very careful here. I'm going to use my potion of heal wounds. I really don't want to use this, but... I'm at about one-third health, and it's getting dangerous, so I'm going to use a potion to heal wounds, and you can see it heals us up considerably. Then I'm going to switch to our Dagger of Venom, and I'm going to take a swing at the Priest, and we killed him. And then I'm going to take a swing at this guy, and we, we hit him, and he almost... He hit us, but he only hit us for four. And I'm going to take another swing... And because I'm invisible, I can just poke these guys down. And it's a little bit easier to do it with this weapon because I could potentially poison them than with my bow. So now I'm going to switch back. This is why getting a short sword or a dagger, something that's easy to hit with, that has a brand on it, especially a brand like Venom, which is such a strong brand early game, is a great way to supplement your character when you're not hitting every single shot you can see that my base accuracy is plus two but with the short sword it's plus four um so i have a little bit better of a chance i feel like of hitting with that um short sword actually i probably have a better chance of hitting with my bow but i felt like poisoning them was a better play right there and so we did in fact kill everybody but unfortunately that priest just kept dodging us and because he didn't die quickly enough he forced us to use some consumables that i didn't really want to use right there all right well, i'm just going to stand here and shoot these guys one by one. Ooh. Whoa, we just hit the jackpot. And what do I mean by that? This is a shrine of Okawaru. This is the god that I was actually going to worship um, anyway when we hit the ecumenical temple, but we found it really, really early on Dungeon 3 on an altar. For this build, for a beginner ranger, I'm going to recommend Okawaru is an excellent god to choose. And I'm recommending that because... Okawaru gives you ammunition, 
And so it helps give you a steady supply of ammo through the game so that you never have to worry about it. On top of that, he gives you the heroism ability, which makes you um, gives you a, a boost to all of your combat-oriented skills, bows included, dodging included, armor skill included, shields, which we're not using, but um, anything that's like a weapon skill or an armor skill, evasion, all of that stuff gets boosted by Okawaru's heroism, so that's great. And... Um, Finesse can also be good, which is the higher level ability of Okawaru to help us fire faster. Okawaru also gives you gifts beyond ammunition, which are armor gifts, could be a weapon, could be a really good longbow or something like that that we want. So there's lots of reasons to recommend Okawaru. And I'm going to kneel down and I'm going to say join and Okawaru welcomes us. So we have found our god. And we're now ready to keep rocking here on Dungeon 3. Whoa! This is a big orc party. Okay. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk right here. And this guy, this orc wizard, is going to come to the staircase with me. And I'm actually going to go up the stairs and just fight him by himself. He's hard to hit. He hasted himself. He's being a turkey. Um, and now he has actually turned himself invisible, which is really annoying. But I'm going to fire at his square. All right. I'm going to fire. I killed the dart slug. I'm going to fire at him again. And I'm going to fire at him again. All right. I'm going to back away. And I'm going to just go up this escape hatch. Um, oh, he's above me. Okay. So this invisible guy followed me up the escape hatch as well. His invisibility will wear off eventually. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to switch to my short sword. And I'm just going to attack him above me. He's, he just cast magic dart on me and he hit me really hard. Um, and I attacked him again, and this time I killed him. He's, they're really, really annoying, but I had already done damage to him, and, um, I felt like it would be easier to hit him with this short sword than my bow, and it worked out. I'm going to raise our strength. We hit level six. Go back to my bow. I'm going to stand over him. See if he had anything good. He really didn't. I'm going to rest, get my hit points back, and go back down. Orc wizards are hard because they turn themselves invisible. They haste themselves. They have magic dart, and they can blink. And they can also confuse you. They can do a whole bunch of crap that's really annoying. Um, so that's why I wanted to just take that guy up the steps by himself. Because one-on-one, -on -one, they're not that bad. I was really hoping to kill him before he turned himself invisible. It just didn't work out. All right. I have three scrolls of Identify now, and I'm going to read them to identify my potion. It's Potion of Degeneration, which I will immediately... I'm going to drop my leather armor. I'll drop this Degeneration. Boom. Gone. Then, um, um, I'm going to read some of these... Blind read these scrolls on Dungeon 2, because there's not any enemies here that I'm worried about, at least that I know of. And I'm going to just read this. And it's a blink scroll. I'm going to blink here. Enchant armor. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to enchant my helmet. The reason is um, my ringmail is armor that I think I'm going to be upgrading with some heavier armor if I can find it. Um, and accessory armor like a helmet is generally harder to get. So enchanting it is okay because I'm less likely to find something better and replace it. So I'm just going to enchant it to give us now a 7 armor class. And let's see these other scrolls. Immolation... Remove curse. Great. Now we can take off our ring mail. And amnesia. All right. Fine. Okay. And we still have two scrolls of identify left over if we need it. Um, let me look for armor. Did I see, Have I found any heavier armor? Not yet. All right. So now I'm going to go exploring. And hopefully these orcs have kind of like dispersed. They were all together in a big party, 
and that's hard. But if they want to just not be together, great. We killed that orc wizard before he did anything tricky. Then we can take them out much easier. Ringmail, short sword, regular orc, take him down. Wow. Where are my arrows? I, I had so many more arrows. So if you ever notice that your arrow stack is low, type in arrow. And then you can see that there is actually 12 on D2. So I'm just going to go get them. Oh, that's right. They're all where that invisible orc was. And I missed him a bunch. Um, he has five poison darts if we wanted. Now I'm going to search for arrows again. And I'm going to just tell myself to go to them. Please go to them. There we go. And I just got 12 in that stack. And then I got one more. Um, I'm going to eat a ration because I'm very hungry. And I'm going to search for arrows one more time. And now I have all the arrows um, that I have found so far. 48. So we, we don't have a lot. And, you know, we had 56, I think, at max. Maybe even 65. And our stack is dwindling this is why okawaru is so great because eventually once we climb up in piety we will be getting ammunition gifted to us so that we can have a better more reliable and steady supply of arrows that is the end of dungeon three as well so i think this is a great place to stop this episode this of this ranger guide for dungeon crawl here in 2020 on version 0.25 with the barachi hunter um, we're sixth level we have found our god and we got ourselves a nice helmet and some ring mail and we're doing great we're ready to go to dungeon four and i will do that next episode and i'll check you guys there i hope you have an excellent evening or day thank you again for watching take care everybody